Thanks for joining us today. We really hope that this ministry has impacted your life and blessed your heart. And if it has, we would love to hear your story. Send us an email. Tell us about you. Send an email to stories at edgewaterchurch.com. And also, if you'd like to partner financially with this ministry, you may do so at our website, edgewaterchurch.com. Or you can download the app through the iTunes Store or through Google Play. Again, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for watching today. Now prepare. Series called Blessed today. Let me hear you say blessed. There we go. All right. So, so we're looking at some things that are very real blessings, but at, this, at first glance, we may not think of it that way. We may not have seen it like that before. Um, a lot of times when we say blessed, we can mean a lot of different things, uh, but a lot of times it has to do with, with things happening to us that are, that are good. That's kind of how we look at it. We're saying, you know, I, I got a newer car. You know, God blessed me with a higher paying job. God blessed us with our dream house. God, God blessed us with that perfect parking spot at the mall. You know, that one just right there by the entrance. And, you know, it was just awesome. We were so blessed. But in this series, like I said, we're looking at four different blessings that are very real blessings from God, but we don't always recognize them as blessings. Last week, we looked at the first one, and that was that God has blessed us with a need. And that need is that we need each other. We need God. We need each other. We were not created to live life independently. We were created to be dependent, to be dependent upon each other and dependent upon God. And so we encourage you to take that step to get connected, to find that place, that those people that you can uh, uh, be connected with. I actually had somebody uh, last night showed up and gave me a, a thing of car gum. You know, remember if you were here, we talked about the car gum rights, that you have that, uh, that type of intimacy and relationship with people that, hey, what I ha- all that I have is yours and all that you have is mine, and we're just, we're just in this together. And so we want to seek out those kinds of relationships. We, God has blessed us with that need for community, Biblical community kind of centered around Jesus Christ. So this week, we're going to look at another blessing that you may not necessarily recognize as a blessing in your life. So I'd imagine that there are probably many of you here this morning who have something significant that bothers you. You look around the world and you look at something and you say, you know, that's just not right. That's just not right. Maybe it's some kind of issue. Maybe it's something that's happening to a particular group of people. Um, I mean, something's happening and it, and it just messes you up. You, you stay awake at night. You find yourself praying about it. You just want it to change. It makes you uncomfortable. You find yourself stirred up about bringing about a change. And if, if that's you, you know what I'm talking about. You've, you've experienced this. Now, I know a lot of those ways that I described how you feel, those are sometimes negative things, and it does kind of make you uncomfortable, and we don't necessarily want to be uncomfortable. But I want to challenge you this morning to not see that as a curse, but instead as a blessing. Because if that's you, if that's how you feel about something that's out there, then the reality is is that God has blessed you with a burden. That God has blessed you with a burden. Now, um, in your bulletin, uh, there's a place for message notes. There are two, two pages even now for message notes. And because uh, I got to tell you, some of, some of the sermons, they're, they're time release sermons. You may walk out of here going, oh, yeah, that was nice. But then it really hits you like on Wednesday and it really kind of sinks in. And, and so it, by writing some of these things down, you, you can go back and, and remember them and, and kind of be reminded. So I really encourage you to, to jot some of these main things down, write down some of the scriptures. So God has blessed you with a burden. God has given you a divine burden that reflects his heart, his character, his nature. And, and it, it's, he's given us that blessing of a burden. How many of you remember Popeye? Anybody remember Popeye? Of course you remember Popeye. You can you know Popeye up there on the screen. Um, what's Popeye's girlfriend's name? You remember that? Olive oil, very good. And so, so whenever the bad guy, Brutus, would show up and he'd, he'd start putting the moves on olive oil, Popeye would kind of, things would just happen and he'd go for a while. But then it would finally get to a point where he had drawn a line and, and Br- Brutus would cross that line. And if you know his famous line, you can say it out loud with me. He'd say, that's all I can stands and I can't stands no more, right? And then, and then he'd squeeze the spinach can and 
just, oh, I hate spinach. But then just drop it in there, and then the gun show, and he, he punches out Brutus. And, and he, he, every cartoon, he would have a moment that he would say, that's it. No more. No more. I'm finished. You've pushed me too far. That's all I can stand, and I can't stand no more. And, and so I pray that God blesses you with such a big burden for something that is wrong in this world that God wants to use you to make it right. That you have this kind of holy Popeye moment where you say, that's it. I can't take it anymore. Surely this is breaking the heart of God. It's time to do something about this burden. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at three questions, and each of the questions has a little Bible story that goes along with it to help you to define your, um, your divine burden. Um, and then we're, we're going to look at maybe some of the wrong ways that people handle the burden that they have. And then, of course, we're going to swing back and finish up with kind of the right ways that we want to move forward in handling the burden. And so what, we're going to spend a little time helping you to identify your blessing of a burden. So a couple of questions that I want you to ask yourself, and this is why I want you to write stuff down because you may not... It may not come to you in this time right now, but there may be time later on as you kind of reflect on this that it really begins to crystallize for you. The first question that you need to ask yourself is, what breaks your heart? What breaks your heart? What, what is it that when you see a particular group of people hurting or a certain thing that's going on in this world that your heart just wells up and becomes heavy and, and you're sad and you're bound up in emotion because you're looking at something going... That, that just isn't right. There's a great example of this in the Old Testament. Um, the people of Israel had been conquered. The walls around Jerusalem had been knocked down. Um, a, and a large number of the people had been taken into captivity, had been taken away. And one of the people who was in captivity was a guy named Nehemiah. He actually has a, there's a whole book about him in the Old Testament, Nehemiah. And eventually some of the people were allowed to return to Jerusalem. Um, but because the walls around Jerusalem had been broken down and because the, the people had left and there had been kind of a vacuum, the, the, the surrounding people who were there um, really started to, to, to fight with the Israelites when they came back. They, they were harassing them. It was really a difficult situation because they didn't have their critical mass of people there. They didn't have the army there. They didn't have the walls to protect them anymore. And so people saw them as vulnerable. And so they just were attacking and attacking. And so um, because... So what happened was word got back to Nehemiah about what had happened. And so this is what we read in Nehemiah chapter 1, starting in verse 3. Where it says, They said to me, Things are not going well for those who returned to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down, and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. That news just, just wrecked his heart. He was devastated. He wasn't just like, oh, that's really sad. Sad face emoji, you know. I mean, it, it, this was a big deal for him. He couldn't eat. He couldn't sleep. He cried out to God. God blessed him with a burden. And you know what happened next? God used him to help make the situation right. God used Nehemiah in that situation. God used the one with the burden. So what is it that breaks your heart? Martin Luther King Jr. There was something that disturbed him. Racism broke his heart so much that God used him to help change the course of our country. What broke his heart? How can one group of people treat another group of people so horribly just because of the color of their skin? He said, that's not right. I have a dream. I have a dream. The, the burden broke his heart. And finally he said, I can't stand it anymore. Somebody's got to do something about this. Maybe God wants to use me. So what is it that breaks your heart in this way? Maybe it's something like poverty. Maybe you've had an opportunity to get out of our uh, nice little North American bubble and you've actually seen some people who don't have, that, that they don't have food, that they don't have drinking water. And that breaks your heart. You agonize about it. Maybe it's babies born in parts of our world that, that they, they haven't even done anything wrong, and, and yet they're, they're born with the AIDS virus. 
Or maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's unwed moms and you look at this group and you feel like there's no one helping them out and they're working two jobs, three jobs, trying to raise their kids and everybody's hurting and they're in bad shape and your heart breaks for them. What is it that breaks your heart? Second question I want, to ask, I want you to ask yourself is this. What makes you angry? What makes you angry? The first one was kind of what breaks your heart. This is what makes you angry. Now, I'm not talking about pet peeves. So we all have those, you know, people with 15 items in the 10 items or less line, you know. Uh, uh, I, I can't tell you how many times since I've used that illustration, I'm walking through Publix and I've got a full grocery cart and I'm looking and every line is full except for the express line and, and they're walking out, you know, like when they're lonely and they want someone to come in their line and I'm like avoiding eye contact because I'm, I'm like, man, if I go in there, then the, somebody from Edgewater is going to be here and they're going to take a picture and they're going to put it on Facebook and I'm going to be in big trouble. And so, and so, I, so sometimes I'll go in there and I'm like shoveling this stuff up there really fast and I'm like, no, I didn't really want to. She was lonely. She begged me to come in here, you know. So, so I'm not talking about pet peeves. I'm not talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about what makes you righteously angry. What is it that your heart is saying? I know that God is not pleased with this. I know it makes God angry, so therefore it makes me angry. It's righteous anger. We see an example of this in Scripture in the book of Exodus. When Moses, if you know Moses' story, he was, he was born as a, a Hebrew, but he was... Um, he grew up in the palace of the Egyptian Pharaoh, uh, but he never forgot his roots. He never forgot his people, um, and he never stopped caring for them. And then here's an example, kind of a, his Popeye moment. In Exodus chapter 2, Moses saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew and uh, one of his own people, and so he looked around, didn't see anybody coming, and so he, he attacked the Egyptian and ended up killing him, buried him in the sand. And he had this Popeye moment where he was saying, you know, I care so much for my people and they're being abused. I have to do something about this. Now, just for the record, I'm not telling you to go out there and snap and go crazy on anybody. All right? Don't, don't say, don't kill somebody and bury them in the sand and say, well, Pastor Dan said I should. No. No. That's bad. Don't do that. <laughs> okay? Don't even, shouldn't have to put that in the sermon, but I'll just throw that out there. All right? But, but you can see that Moses had a burden for his people. And, and, and so who did God use years later to help set him free? He sent him to Pharaoh and said, hey, Pharaoh, you know, enough is enough. It's all I can stand. I can't stand anymore. Let my people go. What is it that you can't stand? Maybe you see crooked politicians and you go, it's just not right. Can I make a difference? Maybe you see people bound up in the chains of addiction that they just can't break free of, and it just makes you angry, and you say, something's got to change with this. Maybe it's when you look at the elderly that are ignored and almost forgotten and abandoned, and you're like, someone should do something about this. What gives you righteous anger? It, it even happened in, in Mother Teresa's life. When she saw the people of Ethiopia, um, here's what she said. She said, when I, when I see waste... I feel angry on the inside. And she said, I don't approve of myself for getting angry, but it's something you can't help after seeing the people of Ethiopia. So what is it that makes you sad? What is it that breaks your heart? What is it that makes you angry? And then the third question I want you to ask yourself is this. What, what do you care about that other people don't care about? What do you care about that other people don't care about? What is, it that, what is it that you look around and you go, why isn't everybody else as passionate about this as I am? Don't you see how much this matters? Why don't you care as much as I care? Well, because God has blessed you with a burden that he wants you to do something about. What is it that you care about that no one else seems to care about? Maybe you care about an environmental awareness and, and you're looking at all this waste and you're saying, we've got to be good stewards to honor God, we have to be good stewards. Why doesn't anyone care about this the way I do? Or maybe it's those who are, who are new in their walk with Jesus. And you're like, man, at Edgewater, we have all these families with children coming into the church. Who is it that's investing in them? Who is it that's teaching God's word to them? Who's helping to raise them up? What's your burden? Sometime during this week, I want you to be able to, to, to define it, to write it out. What's your burden? How has God blessed you with that burden? And so again, as you begin to identify it, I want you to begin to see it as a blessing and understand that God loves you so much 
and, and he created you the way that he created you with talents, skills, gifts, and abilities to be able to do something about it. He loves you so much that he has blessed you with this burden. Because I tell you what, going through life without some type of something that motivates you and inspires you, eh, who cares? This gives you passion, living for this burden, living for this blessing of a burden. Now, sadly, there's a wrong way that people handle their burdens sometimes. There are wrong ways, and so we're going to look at three of them. We're going to look at three wrong ways to handle your burden. The first way, unfortunately, a lot of people, they just complain about it. We talked about that in our last series. They just complain about it. They just whine all day long because it's everybody's fault. Nobody's doing anything. And it's our government's fault because the government's stupid. And it's our education system's fault. We need a better educational system. And it's the church's fault because churches only care about some of these other things. And, and the church isn't really making a difference. And it's everybody else's fault. And they just complain and complain and complain. And I'd like to respectfully say to those of you who are complaining, stop it. All right? Stop it. Stop whining and do something about it. Do something about it. There's a reason why God gave you that burden. Do something about it. Other folks, they wrongly handle their burden. They just ignore it. They ignore their burdens. They want to detach from their burdens. It would be like uh, my, my wife, Shaney, if you know her at all, you know how much she loves cats and dogs. And so anytime she sees anything with abused cats and dogs, it just breaks her heart. And, and so imagine if she was sitting at home and that, you know, that, that commercial with that sad Sarah McLaughlin song that comes on with the, with the sad puppies and stuff like that. And, and what if Shaney saw that but then said, no, nah, I'm just going back to the Hallmark Channel. And she, she changes the, the, the channel and moves away from that to, to say, you know, I, I know that's out there and, th and that, that just hurts too much. And so, so I don't even, even want to look at that right now. I'm, I'm gonna, going back to the Hallmark movie. See, we, we have these burdens sometimes and we go, hey, I know, I know there's somebody hurting and this could bother me, but so don't tell me about it. Because, you know, I'm trying to be comfortable here. Because, you know, it's all about my comfort. And, and I don't want to be upset. And I don't, I don't want to be moved with emotion. I don't want to have a sense of responsibility. I, I, I just don't want to know. I'm, I'm just going to be over here and put my head in the sand. Don't tell me because I function better when I'm detached from this. Okay? So there are those who complain. There are those who ignore it. And the third problem is... is People who try to appease it. They try to appease it. That is, that they start to feel some sense of responsibility in this burden. Uh, they, they feel like a sense of, hey, I should do something. I'm feeling bad. I really should, should act on this. Uh, but, and, and so I, let me just do one little thing, and then maybe I'll feel better about myself. And then I can go on with life knowing that I, I did something. And so, so I see something that bothers me, and I'm like, okay, well, I've got five bucks in my wallet, so, so here, here's five bucks. Everybody see my five bucks? I'm doing five bucks, and hey, maybe next time I'll give ten because I'm just generous that way, you know? And, 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 and then we, we feel better about ourselves. We drop that in there, and then we, we, now, now I can go back to my comfortable life. Sometimes that's how we, we mishandle our burdens, but God, God is blessing you with that burden, and we need to handle it appropriately. So if that's the wrong way, then how do we appropriately embrace this blessing from God? Two thoughts, and they both center around the story of Isaiah. The first thing, again, if you're taking notes, write this down, is that I would challenge you to let your burden burn in your heart. To let your burden burn in your heart. Let it ruin you. Let it overwhelm you. Be open to, to being overcome by the pain, to be broken by it. Let it mess you up. Now, how's that going to happen? Well, you can't ignore it. You've got to embrace it. And so what you have to do is you have to be willing to expose yourself to those things. You, you have to be around people who are also affected by it. You've got to read about it. You've got to hear about it. You've got to study about it. You have to be willing to be comfortable with the discomfort that it brings your heart. You have to be prepared to be awake at 2 o'clock in the morning, praying about it, thinking about it, agonizing about it. Let it just ruin you. Let it mess you up. I've heard stories of folks going on missions trips. And they come back and their hearts are changed. All of a sudden their stuff is no longer nearly as important as it was before. They, they have a more generous heart because they've been changed by it. And, and that burden is burning in their hearts. You know what my burden is? 
13 years here at Edgewater, and um, I have a bigger burden for our mission of helping people meet, know, and serve Jesus Christ than I have ever had before. I pray for you. I pray for the condition of our church. Some of, some of you are so radically committed to Jesus. You are disciples. Your whole life revolves around Jesus. Everything that you have belongs to Jesus. And you're just giving and serving and giving and praying and witnessing and sharing and giving. And you are being Jesus in our communities. I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> but the sad thing is, is that most of us aren't at that place yet. We come to church our 1.7 times per month. And if Dan is kind of funny and doesn't put me to sleep, then maybe I'll come back next week as long as there's not a game on or as long as it's not raining or if, as long as it's not too pretty because, you know, we've got to go to the beach. And, and then I'll tip a couple of bucks on the way out if, if I happen to have any cash on me. But don't ask me to do anything or get involved because life's about me. That burdens me. That breaks my heart. I was literally in my office in tears on Friday writing this. Because God has so much more in store for us, in store for you, in store for me, a rich, abundant life. And so I'm praying that God will give you a burden. Because most people I know, their goal in life in being a Christian is to live a burden-free life. I want to be blessed. I don't want to hurt. I don't want any problems. I don't want to deal with challenging people. I, I don't want to be connected in relationships. I don't want accountability. I don't want to give. I mean, you know, I, I don't have enough, so how, why, why should I give? And, and, but instead, I want more and more, and, and I want to consume. But I don't want to give them my time. I don't want to be bothered. Don't call me. Just let me come and show up and go home. I want to live a burden-free life. But that is the opposite of following Jesus. Following Jesus involves hurting for people and caring for people and living life for him. And so my burden is, is you and, and my burden is me because my leadership hasn't created the right spiritual culture in our church where everyone is a disciple and everyone is helping people meet, know, and serve Jesus Christ. We have, like Lonnie said, we, need, we have to be making disciples. It, it's, like, it's like McDonald's. McDonald's makes Big Macs. If there is, if they just do, if there was a McDonald's that was not making Big Macs, they would shut down the McDonald's. We as a church, we are to make disciples. And if we're not making disciples, we need to be shut down because we're, we're not doing what it is that we were created to do. Now, again, like I said, we, we've got some folks that it, it is happening. But I, I just, I want it for everybody. I want it for each of you. I want you to, to find that joy of following Jesus and find that, that richness in relationship and that, and that purpose in life. And so I'm praying just that you'll let it burn in your heart. That's what happened to Isaiah. In Isaiah's time, the guy who was the king at that time, King Uzziah, died. And all the people freaked out. And so Isaiah did what you should do when people start freaking out. He, he started seeking God. And in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5, he said, Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. He says, I am ruined. I will never be the same. I've seen God, and I am forever different now. Why? Because I've experienced Him. I'm never going to be the same. So, first thing in handling our burdens appropriately is to let your burden burn in your heart. Number two is let your burden move you to action. Let your burden move you to action. Let it burn in you so much that you have to do something about it. Let it move you to action. For example, if you came into church this morning and you said, well, you know, people aren't really super friendly here. I'm burdened by that. Well, guess what? You just became a part of Team Orange, you know? You need to step up and do something about it. You know, you walk in and you see all the parents checking in the, their, their kids here, into the Edgewater kids, and you're like, man, there's so many kids around here. Who's helping out this children? Guess what? You are. If God has placed that on your, your heart, if he has given you that vision to say, hey, you know, I'm seeing this. What's going on here? Then jump in and be a part of it. Sign up and serve in the Edgewater kids ministry. 
Maybe you're saying, you know, what about the online community? So many people are out there and they're connecting from all sorts of different places. Who's watching? Well, you can be a part of it. All these new people that are coming to Edgewater, who's raising them? Who's discipling them? You. You have the burden. You, you, you can care for and, and, and teach and learn with five people around you. You know, well, Dan, where, where's the deeper Bible study? You know, Dan, you're a good little preacher. You, you put the cookies on the bottom shelf and all, you know, but you're not a deep Bible teacher. Where's the deep Bible study? You do it. You do it. Gather 12 people together and you do it. It's your burden. Let it move you to action. Do something about it. We, we as a church, we, we want to get out of that mindset of, of we as the staff and we as some of the core volunteers that we do it all. And then, and then other people come and help us. We want it to be like, like Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Right? That, that's, that's how we want to live. We, we want to be able to empower you and assist you and resource you to be able to live out your burden, to, to be all in serving and loving and caring. And we, we want to turn you loose because you're set on fire and just push you out there and say, go, do what it is that God's burdened your heart with. That's what Isaiah did. What did we read just a minute ago? That he was ruined. And then in verse 8, it says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. He was like, God, pick me, pick me. Here I am. I, I will do whatever it is that you want me to do. I, I can't continue to live the way that I used to live because I've seen the Lord and I, I need to do something about it. I need, I need, I've been inspired. I've been, I've been motivated. I have this burden. My heart's on fire. I've got to go and do something about it. Send me. Pick me. Because I can't stand it anymore. It's all I can stand and I can't stand no more. I've got to do something about it. I'm ruined in the most beautiful and holy and righteous way. Because God has blessed me with a burden and it just won't go away. Let him bless you. Let it burn in your heart. Let it move you to action. Now, I want to, we're going to close a little differently today. Because um, I, just, I just know that God is speaking and moving in people's hearts. And so what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm just going to pray a prayer of blessing over you. And then I want us to have a few moments here with no one but God talking. That you can just open up and let him talk to you and bless you and burden you. And so what I want to invite you to do, if you'll just close your eyes. And um, sometimes our posture is important. So if you would like to, you don't feel like you have to, but if you would like to, maybe if you just want to put your hands in your lap, palms up, just like you're waiting to receive something. You're opening yourself up to what it is that God wants to, to give you. Because he has so much in store for us, folks. So much that he wants to do. So much that he wants for you. So much passion for life. He wants to bless you with a burden. And so this is from a Franciscan benediction. So just take a few moments now and uh, let this be my prayer for you. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you can work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, and starvation so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim.